Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using a bunch of new supplies from Concord and Ninth. I've got some stamps and dies. Here are the Here's the Scoop stamp set and also the coordinating die set. I'm also going to be using another stamp set later on in the video too. So this video, if you've noticed, is a little bit longer than my usual videos. And that's because I'm going to be making a trifold card. And this was a little bit of a comedy of errors because I made a lot of mistakes while I was making this card. And if I would have had time, if I would have had the inclination, I think I would have remade it. To be honest, I think I would have remade it and it probably would have turned out a little bit better. So I'm going to tell you guys what I would have done differently while I'm making it. So the first thing I did was I cut some cardstock and these are cut to uh, about eight and five eighths wide by four and a quarter tall and I've scored each of them at four and a quarter and that makes it so that one side of the panel is just slightly bigger than the other. And I'm going to be adhering the uh, two side panels together that are the same size so that it becomes a trifold card. So they're gonna go together like this and I can, I'll adhere them later. I've also cut a piece of just regular paper. This is just some used grid paper. And I'm going to use that as a guide to do some die cutting. So I have the little coordinating die that goes with that. Here's the scoop stamp set. This is like a bowl with some ice cream with a cherry on top. And I'm going to be cutting two windows into both of the outside panels on this card. And I want the windows to line up perfectly. So that's why I'm using this kind of like a guide to help me get these lined up just right. So I'm going to label the front, this is front one, and then I don't know why I did F2 for front two, because that's really not, it's the inside, it's not the front anymore, but whatever. So I'm putting this guide down onto the, the very front piece, and I'm going to kind of hold it in place, and I'm going to take the die that coordinates, and I'm going to just slide it in, you can, you can kind of feel around and it kind of locks into place, it falls into the right spot. Then I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape and this painter's tape has been used a few times so it's really low tack at this point. It's not very sticky and which is perfect for this and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. So this is going to cut that um, bowl of ice cream shape out of the very first panel and then I'm going to take that guide and I'm going to go over to the second panel and I'm going to get this lined up just right. So I'm going to place that practice guide, the little paper one that I've cut. I'm going to put that right over the top and I'm going to get it lined up over that area perfectly. You take that painter's tape and I'm going to put that over the edge. And this is when it's kind of flip up that uh, guide paper and remove the one underneath. And then I can just put the die onto just the second panel. So it's going to be um, only cutting the portion that I want, the, which is the second panel. So I'll run that through my die cutting machine again. It's going to cut that bowl of ice cream shape out. And now I have both panels die cut. So it's going to piece together like this and those two line up perfectly. So I actually had to do this die cutting twice because I hadn't quite figured out the guides and I didn't know what I was doing. So I actually did that twice. So I did stamp the bowl of ice cream on the, what the inside. Um, this eventually will be a mistake <laughs> and it will be messed up. So just ignore that. We'll get to that later. All right. So I'm going to uh, stamp some greetings for this card. I've got two of them here, the happy birthday and here's the scoop. And I'm going to be using both of these. And these two sentiments or greetings are the reason why I decided to do a trifold because I wanted to have kind of like a, to have it tell a story. I wanted it to say happy birthday on the first panel. You open it up, then it says, here's the scoop. You open it up one more time. And then on the very inside over the bowl of ice cream, it would say calories don't count. I think that's just kind of a cute little way to have, you know, it kind of steps up each time you unfold it. I thought that was kind of cute. So I'm stamping the last sentiment, calories don't count, onto some licorice twist black cardstock from Basil. And I prepped that with a powder tool and then stamped the outer banner shape and also the words in Versamark ink. 
Then I sprinkled on some Hero Arts white embossing powder and I'll use my heat tool to melt that until it's smooth and melted. So I'm going to use the coordinating die that goes with the little banner shape and I'll just run that through my die cutting machine and once that's cut out I can set it aside and I won't really touch this until the very end of the card. It's one of the very last steps is to adhere the calories don't count piece on the inside. So to decorate the two the first two folds of the card, I'm going to use some Distress Oxide inks and do some ink blending. So I'm starting out with Peacock Feathers. I'm going to grab a mini round blending tool, and I'm also going to speed this up really, really fast here in a minute. Um, but I'll walk you through the colors I'm using. Um, so this first one's Peacock Feathers, and I just blended in that corner, bringing it down a little bit more. Cleaned up my craft sheet so the color doesn't transfer, and then moved on to Fossilized Amber. And where those two colors overlap, I'm going to get a nice green color. I then brought in some picked raspberry and finished off the that outer border of this and I like where those colors meet there's a little bit of a purple so for the second panel which is the um, the, the one that's just inside the first fold I used the same colors but I changed where the colors were oriented and I also overlapped these a little bit more so there's a little more green a little bit more purple and also some orange so here's the sprinkles turnabout stamp set this is one of their turnabout uh, background sounds which are kind of cool. They're designed specifically so that you um, you can turn either the stamp set or your cardstock and you can get like differing colors of stamping. You'll see here what I mean here in a minute. So I've placed that sprinkles stamp set on the inside of my Misty tool and I'm first going to ink it up with the picked raspberry color. I'm going to stamp that down. It's going to add some sprinkles onto that ink blended area. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide in the other panel too because I'm going to stamp all of the pink at the same time, all of the picked raspberry. So I'm going to stamp this one right over that same area. And then I'm going to clean off that stamp really, really well because I'm going to now uh, change it to a different color. And I thought it I was, I was really missing more purple on the stamp and all the stamping and blending. So I thought I would bring in the color Wilted Violet. This is a really pretty purple shade from the Distress Oxide line. And I'm going to ink that up. You'll also notice that I've turned my card, my panel. And that's so that um, I can have the sprinkles be in a different spot. So I've turned it 90 degrees. And I'm going to stamp down with that, with the purple sprinkles. So I'm going to remove that panel and I'm going to bring in the first panel again because this is the second one. Or actually, no, that's the first one. I'm going to bring in the second one now and do the purple stamping. So I'm rotating this one so it's a different orientation from the first time I stamped. And I'm also going to uh, re-ink that sprinkle stamp set with the purple again just so I can get a really nice impression. So I'll stamp that down, and you'll notice that those sprinkles, they aren't overlapping, they're not in the same spot. It looks really random. It looks like a really fun way to do a bunch of sprinkles like this. So I'm going to do one more color, and I'm only going to do three colors for this. So this is this the third and last one, and I thought I would bring in Peacock Feathers. It's that um, kind of nice teal blue shade, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this again. So I have both of the panels kind of hanging out of the bottom of my Misty tool now. And I'm going to stamp both of them in Peacock Feathers. So I'm going to bring in that other panel and stamp, stamp it down. And it's, this is kind of fun because you have three different colors of sprinkles. They're all in different locations. It looks really random, but you did it really, really quick. I think it's kind of fun. So now I'm going to go back and this is where you're going to see my mistake. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it like that because I turned this over and I'm like, holy crap, there was a bunch of like sprinkles on the inside of the card. You can see all those spots. And I thought, you know, maybe I can stamp more sprinkles and make it work. So I tried stamping more sprinkles and then it just looked ridiculous. So then I decided to um, basically cover the inside. Cut a new piece of white cardstock that I'm going to stamp the bowl of ice cream on and I'm also going to cover the two inside panels so I thought that oh well if I'm covering them I might as well bring in a different color so I'm going to bring a different color here in a minute 
But as far as stamping the bowl of ice cream goes, this is exactly what I did the first time and it worked, so I thought I'd do it again. I basically just closed the first fold on the card, folded it down, and then traced it so I had a nice pencil outline. And then I used my MISTI tool to line up that bowl of ice cream stamp right over the penciled area. Now I took my time, made sure it was lined up really, really well, and then stamped it in uh, VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And stamping it in VersaFine ink was a mistake. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I was able to work around it. So here's that purple cardstock or the different colors of cardstock I was talking about. I cut it to be the same size as the front panel and then I lined it up. So this is exactly where it will eventually be. And then I brought in one of those pieces that were cut out earlier. Put a little bit of adhesive on the back and I'm going to puzzle piece it directly onto purple cardstock. So I'm going to slide that in so it's in the exact spot where it needs to be. And then I can remove that ink blended panel piece. And that's going to leave just the white shape on top of the purple cardstock. Then I can take the die and place it right over the top and get that in the perfect spot. You can see it'll kind of lock in place once you have it in the right area. And then I ran all of that through my Big Shot machine. And that cut out the perfect position for this shape. So I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of the purple piece. Um, I'm making sure I'm getting all the edges and corners pretty well. And then I'm going to position this very carefully right over the other piece. So this worked out really well. I was kind of nervous because I'd done all that blending and all that stamping. I didn't want to waste it. And thankfully I was able to salvage this piece. So the purple is all done. I then took the pink cardstock and I did the exact same thing for the other panel. And for reference, the cardstock colors for this are lavender from Simon Says Stamp and then also dull pink. That's the pink color. So as far as the card assembly goes, I put adhesive on the back of the center panel, or on, I guess it was the front of the center panel on the pink piece, lined them up and then pressed them together and that worked out pretty well. Okay, so now I'm gonna worry about that uh, bowl of ice cream that's on the center of the card. I put adhesive all along the, uh, the back of it, and then I'm gonna line it up right through that second panel window, line it up in the right spot, and then I can press it down, and it's going to adhere to the center panel, if that makes sense. And that makes it so it lines up even better and I have a nice clean white piece of cardstock. The cardstock wasn't cut to the perfect size, another mistake. Working with it though, I'm salvaging my card here. I just used a T-square ruler and an X-Acto knife or a craft, craft knife to cut off the excess of that cardstock. Okay, so here is where it was a mistake that I used the VersaFine pigment ink. Because I didn't realize or I hadn't thought through how I was going to color this, I ended up coloring the ice cream in Copic markers. And if you are a Copic colorer, you know that VersaFine Onyx Black ink is not a Copic friendly ink. So um, I'm kind of trying to avoid the black lines um, and bringing in those colors um, as carefully as possible. I don't want them to go into the black because it will smear and smudge and ruin the tips of my markers. So I was able to be really careful and get these colors on here, but I knew with the bottom part of the, the ice cream bowl, I wasn't going to be able to color over all of those black lines. So then I switched to colored pencils and I used a silver color pencil and then shaded with a black color pencil. And that seemed to work. The, the mixture of the, the two color mediums was okay. I then took those greetings that I stamped earlier and I cut them into banner shapes. And this is going to go over the, the first part of the card, this big happy birthday. And then I took the here's the scoop, which is a little bit smaller than the happy birthday, so you won't see it through the front of the card. And then I adhered the very last piece, which is the calories don't count little greeting right there. So that was kind of cute and how each one covers up the one below it. So that is the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, big thanks to Concord and Ninth for sending along these goodies to play with. And make sure you head over to their blog to see even more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.